one of the things that we have talked about quite a bit on the American Artifact series are, are bringbacks from World War II. Things that, that World War II soldiers, uh, you know, brought back uh, from their time in the service as, as souvenirs or as trophies from, from their time in Europe or in Japan. Well, today, uh, we're going to go into some of the more common items that were brought back. A lot of people, you know, open up, you know, trunks in the attic or they, they find boxes of stuff in the basement. They don't know really uh, what it is that they are looking at. So today, Eric and I are going to kind of walk through a, a, a few of the things that soldiers brought back in the years concluding World War II. contacted um, through email and phone calls a lot at the Gettysburg Museum of History about World War II German items that were brought back by someone's family member. We get the same email time and time again. My grandfather was in World War II and he brought all this Nazi stuff back. We don't know what to do with it and we don't know what it is. We don't even know if it's real. Well I always tell people send us photographs send photographs via email to info at Gettysburg Museum of History .com. So today I'm going to go over a few of the more common German items that were brought back by American soldiers. A lot of times on the American Artifacts series we show you really exotic items and really um, spectacular items, meaning the more rare items, but today I'm just going to go over some of the things that you see a lot in vet bring back groupings. Um, so I'm gonna start here. This is a salt book. This was like an ID book that German soldiers had. Um, they would have a, a, a photo usually in there and it would have all their records. And these were ta taken quite often by American soldiers. Now this tells me, because it was denazified here, meaning they crossed out the swastika, that this soldier most likely survived the war and used this as an ID after the war or during, or perhaps as a POW. And then you also get ones like this. This is the workbook. Um, and there's all kinds of different German booklets like this for different things. So th these are commonly seen in br bring back groupings. Another thing you see is the Iron Cross. And there's, ver there's a lot of different variation on that. But what you mo what the most common ones that you see in vet bring back groupings is the Iron Cross second class 1939 model. So that's uh, um, the one that was given for World War II. And then sometimes you'll see the 1914 version. This is a World War I version. And it, it was um, a very common medal. A lot of the people that were in combat would have gotten that. This is a World War I Iron Cross first class. Now note it has a pin on it instead of the uh, ribbon. So that was a higher class of the same metal. Another one you see a lot is the War Merit Cross. Um, this is a War Merit Cross second class. There's various cross or classes on that as well. And uh, here you have the version with and without swords. And you know that's one of the most common World War II German medals. This is a political cap eagle. So you see a lot of those, um, you know, the, the, the guys that were political leaders would have had those on their visor caps. This is a general assault badge, another common German award in World War II. You see these quite often. Even more common is the infantry assault badge. This is the silver grade of the infantry assault badge. Um, this, you see belt buckles a lot. This I, I brought out, I just happened to bring out what we had um, in, in stock right now. Now we sell this on our website also. If you're looking for authentic German World War II items, go to GettysburgMuseumOfHistory.com. We do buy and sell these, these items. And this is a Hitler Youth belt buckle, um, one of the more common ones. And then sometimes you'll see insignia. And I just, I just you know, took a couple of real common ones. This is a collar tab. This is an officer's collar tab. The soldiers would sometimes rip those off of uniforms because they didn't want to bring a whole uniform back. So they would just bring some of the insignia. This is an army eagle um, en en enlisted. 
um, and, and that's a breast eagle. You see that quite often. You can tell that this is uniform removed. This was actually worn by someone. This is a Nazi party badge, another very common item that you see in vet bringbacks. You know, that's, that, those were for people who were members of the party. I believe that's the uh, lapel version or the buttonhole version. Um, it's got enamel on it. There's also a later version that ha that's, that's made out of zinc that's painted. Um, not quite as um, high quality as that one. This is a Army Mountain Troop cap badge. Another very common thing that you see. This is an SA sports badge in bronze, and that's, that's one of the more pre-war items. It's, it was for the, the SA or brown shirts, and members of the SS were also uh, eligible for that, and it's ju just a sports award. And you see a lot of photos of SS and SA members before the war um, wearing that award. This is a police cap eagle. This is the type one. Um, there's also a type two that's a little bit bigger. And uh, you also see a lot of armbands, and I just brought three real common ones out. Um, there's, I, I don't know how many different variations, but it could probably get into the hundreds if you count every little variation. This is the um, non-member of the Wehrmacht armband. So this is for people who are working with the military, perhaps on a railway, railway or a road or something, and they may be working around military people and they would wear these so the military could identify them and that, you know, that they were supposed to be there. This is a Hitler Youth armband. Now, Hitler Youth was um, an organization that was for youth. Um, it was to try to militarize them and politicize them. Um, I believe in, a, in an earlier version of American Artifact, we talked about them a little bit, and JD said it was kind of like the Boy Scouts, but a bit more problematic. I love that. Um, it definitely was. Um, so this is a Nazi Party armband, and this this is a very common armband. And of course, anybody in the Nazi Party would wear this, and mostly SA members when they wear them on their brown shirt uniforms. I want to show a few more of these awards and decorations that American soldiers would bring back as, as kind of like souvenirs or trophies uh, from the, the European theater. What we're looking at right here is a black wound badge. So you can kind of think of this as like the, the German version of the Purple Heart. And there were three different variations. There was a black, a silver, and a gold. Uh, this one is black, even though it kind of has that gold look to it. And uh, the, the different variations would be awarded uh, depending either on the severity of the wound or how many times uh, the, the soldier was wounded. This one right here, you see a lot of these. Uh, this is a medal that was awarded to soldiers who participated in the fighting on the Eastern Front. Okay, so here you can see this German helmet along with this stick grenade. And uh, the, the German helmet is, is kind of facing towards the east. Um, in the you know the years leading up to the, the the fighting in World War II, well, there was an effort to build up fortifications and secure Germany's western border. So this medal right here uh, was the the Western Wall Medal, and it was given to people who participated in the building up of the Siegfried Line. And uh, what we're looking at here is a, uh, a mother's cross. And I've always found these to be interesting. Uh, this was uh, introduced by a decree uh, from Adolf Hitler in December of 1938. And uh, he, he said um, that, that uh, he, he was establishing this cross of honor to the German mother. So if you think about it, Germany is expanding. Okay, they have Lebensraum. They need living space. Well, as they are expanding out, well, they need to fill these new territories with German people. Uh, so, so this was awarded to women who were cranking out German babies. And uh, there were three different variations. There's a bronze, a silver, and a gold cross. Uh, the bronze was eligible for mothers who had four or five children. Uh, the silver was for women who had given birth to six or seven children. And the first class, the, the gold cross, was eligible uh, for mothers who had eight to 12 children. 
Another very popular item that soldiers in the European theater and really the, the Pacific theater as well brought back as souvenirs from the war uh, was flags. Okay, so here we have a, uh, a Nazi party flag that, that some veteran brought back. And you'll see pictures of, you know, these soldiers, uh, you know, holding up a flag with all of their buddies. This was kind of a sign that, that they had won. Uh, they had captured the flag. It was, it was a sign that, uh, you know, the, the enemy had, had lost and had been defeated. And uh, whenever we look at some of these other flags, one that I, ones that I really like are the ones that are signed where the, the soldier would have all of his buddies, you know, sign the flag, kind of showing who participated in the actions to, uh, you know, de defeat the enemy in that particular area. So here's one from a guy named Ray Albers from Linyard, Iowa, or Ledyard, Iowa. Uh, here's one for a guy who's nicknamed Sim, James Simpson, who was from Atlanta. So, you know, sometimes people look at, at these uh, you know, Third Reich items, and they they get a little creeped out by it, which is is understandable on some level. Uh, but understand that the people who collect these items aren't sympathizers of the Nazis or of their cause. Uh, the the men who captured these items obviously fought against the Nazis. They weren't sympathizers, but they wanted to to bring these items home as a symbol that that they had won and that they had defeated this awful enemy. Now along with the smaller items such as medals and armbands and flags, sometimes you get bigger items um, in, in bringbacks or in groups of bringbacks. And one of the most common bringbacks that we see, and there's all kinds of variations. I just, I just took one um, from my office. This, this is an SS dagger. So one of the most prized war trophies for an American soldier was a dagger. So there's army versions, there's SA, there's Luftwaffe, there's all different variations. This happens to be an SS one and um, they, they, they were prized war trophies and um, they're also very prized on the collector's market. Um, there's people that specifically just collect edged weapons. Sometimes you'll see uh, headgear, you know, this, I, I, like, like I said, I was just bringing out stuff that was easily accessible. This isn't stuff from the museum. This is stuff in our archive. This is a Luftwaffe overseas cap, and it's got the badge on there, the eagle and the, and the national cockade, and it has a maker mark in here in a size of 55. And you could tell that's very well worn. It was brought back by a veteran. Um, but you see, you see the soft head gear sometimes. And here's a belt. And um, sometimes you'll see full belts and other field gear as well. This is this happens to be an Africa Corps or tropical belt. This is army. It's got the army belt buckle. But in most of the ones that you'll see in vet bringbacks will be leather. This happens to be canvas because this is the tropical version. And another thing that you see is the steel helmet. Now we've gone over this these in in other videos, but um, a lot a lot of um, Veterans brought back helmets of various types, um, you know, whether it was, this is an army double decal model 35. You also see a lot of civic helmets um, and other military helmets. And almost all veteran groupings that we get, if it's untouched, will have firearms. Now these veterans, <clears throat> besides looking for items to show the defeat of the enemy, such as the flags, we, they also brought items that they thought were valuable. You know, they thought firearms are valuable, so they, they would bring them back. This is a P-38, and this came from a, a, an American soldier. And a lot of times in veteran groupings, you would, get, you would see two pistols. There seemed to be, uh, you know, towards the end of the war, uh, they had to have their bringbacks, their larger bringbacks signed off by their commanding officer. And it seemed like the limit with pistols was two in some cases. Some people brought back more. Um, but a lot of times, like I said, when we get an untouched veterans grouping like that, they'll, they'll, a lot of times there'll be two pistols. Once in a while, you'll find a visor cap. Um, these are a little more less common than, than the other items. This is an army, German army uh, officer infantry cap, visor cap, and it's got the white for infantry. This is a really nice one. It's got bullion in, in, insignia. Um, most of the officers' headgear was, visor caps were um, private purchase, so th this is a really nice version. It's made by a company called 
Errol, E-R-E-L. You can barely see that, but um, this was one of the more um, uh, higher-end manufacturers of headgear. And I'm bringing this out just kind of to show off a little bit. Um, you know, we did a video before on trophy helmets. I just got this recently from a, a good friend of mine, and uh, he was nice enough to contact me because he had gotten into some stuff, and he, he knows I like these, and he, he uh, sent me a text with this photo, and he's like, hey, he's like, uh, you want this? And I was like, uh, yeah, of course I do. So this is a 29th Division trophy helmet. It was painted with the various places that this veteran went to. Um, it says France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, England, and it has some of the towns on here, including Omaha Beach, and um, they painted this swastika on there, and of course the 29 Let's Go, usually it says Let's Go, but he says Let's Go, um, kind of unusual, most of them say L-E-T-S, Let's Go. Um, very interesting, I'm very happy to get this, so shout out to my pal for sending me the picture of that and letting me buy that before he put it on his website and it got scooped up. So anyway, um, to, to recap a little bit, you know, um, these items are, are come our way quite often and, and if you'd like to get one on our website, GettysburgMuseumOfHistory.com. If you have these items and don't know what to do with them, we will either, you can donate them to the museum if you want them on exhibit or if you, if, if you want to make a little money, um, info at GettysburgMuseumOfHistory.com, email us pictures and we'll make you a fair offer on your items. Okay, well, there you go. There are some of the items that, that soldiers brought back uh, after their time in Europe during World War II. And again, you can go on the, the website of Gettysburg Museum of History and uh, have a, a little piece of this history for yourself. And all of the purchases go to help uh, fund the museum and keep it open to the public for free. So yeah, very interesting items uh, that soldiers brought back after their time in service in World War II.